As the second season of Never Have I Ever kicks off on Netflix, The Hindu Weekend catches up with actors Purna Jagannathan and Richa Murjani to talk about playing women in STEM, the tough daily decisions women make for their families, and more. The series, written by Mindy Kaling and Lang Fisher, follows the lives of Tamil American high school student Devi Vishwakumar, played by Maitri Ramakrishnan. Devi's mother, dermatologist Dr. Nalini Vishwakumar, played by Purna Jagannathan, and PhD student Kamla Nandiyawada, Devi's cousin, played by Richa Murjani. Hi everyone, I'm Divya Bhavani for The Hindu Weekend, and we are joined by Purna Jagannathan, who plays Dr. Nalini Vishwakumar, and Richa Murjani, who plays Kamla Nandiyawada. Guys, last year, the show resonated with so many people, not just South Indian people, but a lot of people. Yeah. And now the expectations for season two plot lines, they're pretty up there. Can you describe what those first table reads coming back to the show was like we, with Maitre Ramakrishna and Mindy Kaling and Lang Fisher there? What were they like coming back, especially now that you guys are so much more familiar with each other and, and everything? They were so, um, first of all, we were, we were greenlit during the pandemic. So the fact that we were going to be together and working and being, you know, being able to become a family unit again was so exciting. Um, those, I don't know what happened in the writer's room, but season two is even funnier and even deeper and even more profound than season one. Um, ta- you know, the season one, the table reads were always lovely and, and, and very moving, but season two, we were laughing so hard, even though we weren't in person, we were do- all doing it remote. Um, it was it was a delight, but the most important and the most unbelievable part is re- reconnecting with my TV family during this time. Uh, that we uh, we were the only we were in a bubble. We didn't see anyone else for for months and months. So it was it was just us for a long time. I totally agree. And you know, I was nervous when we had to to do the table reads for the first time virtually because normally they're done in person, and I was worried that it would kill the creative process and. It wouldn't be that funny. And I was just not excited about that. But it was incredible to see our very first table read that was virtual, how much energy everybody still brought to it and found it was like we were adapting to a whole new way of performing because table reads still are a performance. You know, a lot can go wrong and um, we still have to, um, you know, impress everybody who's watching. And I was just so excited to see how much energy everyone brought to it. And that translated to when we actually shot the whole thing mm-hmm. through the pandemic. And I'm just so proud of the crew and the cast and everybody for just showing up and putting all of their heart into this show, um, despite the time that we're living through. Mm-hmm. Right. And of course, the show is Mindy Kaling and Lang Fisher's baby. Um, yeah. Last year, Mindy told a Hindu that she learned so much from you guys, like you guys brought so much spirit to the show and for her learning experience as a writer and a producer. Any fun set, any fun onset things that you guys brought to the table this year? I mean, I remember for the, um, there's an episode where I go back to India. I don't ha- have you seen the show yet? Yes. Uh, so I was really, you know, the wonderful thing about the show is that it's it's so collaborative. It's a deeply collaborative show. So what, you know, my input and Richard's input and everyone's input actually makes its way not only into the script, but into the props, into the way, what we wear, into what we do. It, it, it has such an impact. Um, and it's, it's small things that people won't even notice, but it was so important for us to get the authenticity right, like the, like the plate that the food comes, that the mother-in-law brings the food out on is so South Indian, but also what's cooked within, you know, on the, the actual food. Because you can't cater during COVID, you can't bring food out. They had to teach someone how to make South Indian food. That person came to set and made 11 South Indian dishes and they were all delicious, you know? So it's just, just it's not only an attention to detail, it is a commitment to authenticity, a commitment to listen to us, a commitment to get it right. Yeah. And the spirit of collaboration, as you mentioned, you know, mm-hmm. it was just it's so wonderful that, I mean, Min- Mindy herself is South Asian, but, you know, Lang, she was so open to collaborating and listening to our feedback and working with us. And it just felt so wonderful to be supported like that and to know that we could bring our full Indian, South Asian, brown selves without having to compromise on anything. Mm-hmm. And both of you play women in STEM, which is so important. Um, with Nalini as a dermatologist and Kamala getting her PhD from Caltech, audience will get to see more of your careers. 
But what did you learn about the still very contentious industry for women while continuing to play Nalini and Gamla? Uh, should, I, should I go? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I, you know, women in every industry, in every part of the world are marginalized and made to feel uh, less than and um, um, invisible. And I don't know if I already said that, but, you know, especially when I was doing this, this storyline for season two, um, I learned a lot about what women and specifically women of color in STEM fields go through. And it is such a real problem, a real systemic problem that exists um, where, you know, their names aren't taken off of papers. They're not given credit for their work and their research and their contributions and their voices are silent. So what Kamala goes through in season two, um, granted, you know, we, we see it through a comedic lens, but it's a very real problem that exists. And um, I was so excited to show this storyline because I also you know, read a lot of articles about how uh, women in STEM and especially, especially women of color in STEM is something that is not represented like pretty much at all in the media. And that can lead to young women who want to go into these fields, not feeling confident enough to do it because rep representation is so important in every um, aspect. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also I, I also think it's not only women in STEM. You know, if you ever saw a late night Mindy's movie, she talks about being the writer's room, being the only woman of color in the writer's room, totally being dismissed all the time. She talks about it in her interviews and how getting credit and fighting for credit and how being overlooked is so um, it goes so hand in hand uh, with being a woman of color. Mm -hmm. Very true. And Bruna, last we saw Nalini, she was ready to leave for India which was, a, you know, for a lot of audiences, a very intimidating turning point because we thought, wait, is this Nalini, one of the most strongest, you know, South Indian women we've seen on screen so far, actually accepting defeat in some way? To what extent do you agree with this and how much do you resonate with Nalini? I think this? Nalini puts her family first. Which I think it's a lot of what women have to contend with, um, profession versus family. I think she's just at a junction where she feels to uh, raise Devi in a way that uh, with the values that she like to raise her with, she needs the support of her family. And uh, again, it's, it's not only a decision that a woman makes when she's lost a husband, it's a decision that we all make on a daily basis, you know, just even being a mother myself and the jobs that I've turned out turned down because uh, I have a, a young son at home. I, I, I you know, I, I can't, that's a whole other chapter. Um, but uh, the decision feels right for her. You know, uh, of course she does that wonderful, the tragic immigrant thing of going home to find out it's not home anymore. Um, and then, you know, coming back and, and really set, putting her boots down in, uh, in California. But uh, it's a very typical experience. I actually, I know a lot of people, and I think Purna does as well, of you know people who grew up here or, or their parents have been here for many years. And in high school, their parents decided to move back to India with them. And it wasn't at all how they left it or how they remembered it. You know, we're growing just as nations are growing and the world is growing. And, you know, sometimes when you leave something, you expect to go back to the same thing, but it's completely different. So I think this was so interesting to see when she goes back and that experience that so many people do have when they go back to their homeland. Um, and Richard, following shows like Indian Matchmaking, a lot more people are now able to understand Kamala's journey um, in this marriage mart business a little bit yeah. better or in a different way. What are your thoughts on the current representation of, you know, the arranged marriages on screen? And do you have any hopes on where that representation could be headed? Yeah, and I think our show definitely shows arranged marriage in a very different light than what we've normally seen, especially in Western media, where arranged marriage is normally seen as this forced situation, which also does happen, unfortunately, in, you know, um, circles where the women don't have as much agency. And, and that is an unfortunate thing. But there's also the more modern arranged marriages. Um, I know a lot of people who have met their partners that way. And I myself before I met my now husband, uh, who I met on my own, but before that, <clears throat> when I was single in my 20s, I felt the pressure just like Amala does and so many young South Asian or all women feel. Um, you know, with our biological clocks, we have to get married by a certain time. Um, and, you, you know, I, my parents introduced me to people and it wasn't really any different than me looking for somebody on a dating app. It was just being vetted through my parents who I trust more than an algorithm, to be honest. So <laughs> I'm glad that we got to see uh, a different 
way of seeing arranged marriage, um, you know, that Prashant ends up being wonderful. And it's just ha- an added bonus that the family already likes him and likes his family. And now it's up to them to decide if they like each other and they want to be together. And then nobody's forcing them to be together. Nalini even says that in season mm-hmm. one. So, um, you know, I, I don't think we need to continue showing arranged marriages in every single story about a South Asian family. It's just not necessary. But um, if we do, I would love to see um, just a different narrative, like kind of like how our show has done. I also love that the show, you know, which I use the word agency, and I love that the women of our show, including the mother-in-law that comes to, to, to live with us, has so much agency, just different shades of uh, feminism for brown women that the show represents. Yeah, I'm really looking forward for more audiences to see the amazing work that you guys have done on season two and congratulations. And thank you so much for your time with the Hindu Weekend. Yeah, thank you so much.